Thank you. 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 Yes, he is real. He is real. I want to challenge you today. Before we get started, I wanted to challenge you today. You know, we all got a conference zone. Sometimes we use our excuses to say, I don't praise out loud because this is me. This is the way I do it. But I want to challenge you just for one minute today. Step out of your comfort zone. Meet me halfway. And I want you to praise. I want you to lift your voice up to God. And tell him thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Being good to me. And wake me up this morning for starting me on my way. To give me a right to the tree of life. For dying on the cross for me one day. That I might have the right to the tree of life. And we thank you today. Yes, Lord, we do to thank you today. Now, Lord God, it's me. Mm -hmm. It's me. It's me again, Lord. It is me, Lord. It's me again. I talked to you early this morning. And I talked to you late last night. And I said, it's me, Lord. It's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Yes, Lord. Standing in the need of your leadership, Lord. Yes. Standing in the need of your guidance, Lord. Standing in the need of your understanding, Lord. It's me. It's me that's standing before your people, Lord. Your saints, Lord. Your shapes, Lord God. It's me. Yes, Lord God. Help me to decrease that you may increase yes Lord. that your word might find that spiritual ear that's willing to hear a word from you it's me lord it's me lord. it's me lord yes lord again yes lord. and we thank you right now in jesus, name. In jesus holy name we yes, pray thank god thank you thank you amen amen amen, amen. 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 God bless you today. Each one of you today is truly a privilege and an honor you, to be Jesus. able to come to meet you here today and love. Amen. Love. Love. Love and kindness have not drawn deep. Amen. And we all are here today with that on our mind and our hearts today because we love who? We love Jesus first and we love the brother. The Bible says, forsake not yourself to assemble together yes. with believers. And when all the believers come together, all our minds are geared in towards one goal in mind. It's Christ. And we do not want to leave here like we came. Amen. 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 Because some people run to church for burden problems. Some <laughs> come because we have in church. But some come to get some deliverance. They be seeking. Seeking something from God. A way to go. What to do about situations in our life. And I want to give honor to my pastor this morning. Thank you again for this open door. You know, <laughs> I always talk about you a lot. Amen. I owe you. Give dog. Yes, I owe you. No, 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 no. I owe you. I, 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 I owe you. That's personal. Right. But God knows it all. Amen. He knows it all. And God bless my brother and my sisters this morning. God Amen. bless you all. Thank God for you. My friend back there Amen. with your table. You know, I found out about my pastor, uh, uh, Minister Cable. I learned one thing about him that kind of stick to my mind when my phone rings. Or how I call him. When I get off the phone, I'm always leaving for something to pray for. He always going to leave me with that. That help me when I leave, I'm going to get it. I got to pray for that one because I'm going to need a little more help in that area. That. <laughs> but thank Amen. God for him because he is a reminder to me to whom I am. He don't bite his tongue. If I'm not quite straight, he feel like he's going to straighten me up. I love him. 
I love it. Amen. That's what brother, brother love all the time. And if it went any other way, then I'd kind of be all God because I'd be wondering what's wrong with it. <laughs> and I want to thank God for my wife, whom is not with me today. Uh, she yes. stayed at the church, and uh, she's a praise leader at uh, St. Luke. And the service was going on, and so she stayed to attend that today. And each one of you, I just want to share just one little old testimony before we go into this word. And I've been trying, it's been pounding on my heart, and I've been trying to figure it out. And maybe I might just need to leave it alone. Amen. Amen. But I want to share this one to you. I was asleep the other night, and I was dreaming. And this dream was so, so real. It was just like I could just touch it. I was driving that school bus. And I was going down Washington Street. And I looked up and spotted a man standing in the road with a shotgun. So I took the bus and took another route to hide behind a building because I had a busload of children right to try to protect them. My God. And I was sitting there behind hiding the mm -hmm. pastor. Mm -hmm. And there he stepped around the corner with that shotgun at my head. Mm -hmm. Laying in my bed, just dreaming away. Just, just, it just seemed so real. He pointed it right between my eyes. Mm -hmm. It got so real to me till I started running Jesus. and fell out of the bed. That's the fact, and the dream stopped. Jesus. I fell out of the bed trying to get away from that shotgun. Right. Praise the Lord. Right. Somebody might say that's the devil chasing you. Oh, you might have an interpretation. Oh, that just was a dream. You ate too much food. That's all. Oh, whatever it was. But the final analysis of that, I was running for my life, and I was trying to get away, and bam, hit that flow. And my wife woke up, I hit it so hard, she said, you mean to tell me you done fell out of the bed? <laughs> I said, yes, I fell on my shoulder, but it, it hurt me a little bit, but I got back up and got back in the bed. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Just being human. I just want you to hear that one again and think about it, because it could be something in it. Amen. Mm. Cause we had a brother in the Bible they called a dreamer. Yes, sir. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yes. Anything we do, anything we do in this life, we can go back and look at the Bible and we can find something went on to whatever we are going through in our life. It's there. You just got to read it. If you seek him, you'll find him. Even in a dream. You see, and I've been pondering that in my heart. I've been doing just like Mary. When they told us about Jesus, pondering it in my heart, what is the significance behind that dream? You're running for your life. I was running for my life. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now let's look at the word of God. We already heard the word now. We already, Brother Marshall already done preached me happy. And we can close the book and go home now. But what I'm going to do, I'm just going to follow the instruction that I've been given. And I was invited to bring a word, so I'm just going to add on to what he has brought us today to just to get us on our way. We thank God yes. for him yes. today. And we're going to look at a subject today. Don't let Satan don't let Satan turn you from the truth. You better yes. say Lord. it. Amen. Don't let Satan turn you from the truth. So let's just start at Genesis, the third chapter. And we're going to read the first four verses. Very, very familiar scripture that we all sometimes like to sit down and, 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 and read it over and over and over and over and over again. And every time we read it, we get a different understanding. Amen. Amen. Now let's read it. Now the serpent was more substantial than any beast of the field which the Lord God has made. I want you to go back at the steel and just say this to me. Sly. Slick. Slick. Cunning. 
Crap. And all the above. Crap. That's Satan. Okay? And he said unto the woman, Yea, has God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree in the garden. And the woman said unto the servant, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the uh, slick, the cunning, the sly, serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. And right quickly, Luke the tenth chapter, seventeen through the eighteenth verse read. And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devil, the slick, the sly, mm -hmm. the cunning mm -hmm. devil, are subject unto us through your name. Amen. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning falling from heaven. Amen. Amen. That the Lord had a blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated. Amen. So we're going to talk about, are we going to preach about, are we going to teach about how slick old Satan think he is. Okay, because see, you can think on something so long and you can believe it yourself and it can be 100% wrong. Yes, sir. Just there, just meditating on it. That diet, that, what did they call it? That uh, idle mind, they call it. They were workshop, you just sitting over there just thinking, thinking. And you can, and we just got through reading that you can make yourself sick by your mind. By what you thinking about. You better say it. You can hurt yourself. Yep. Now, Satan one time was in heaven. Mm -hmm. And as I read at the latter part of, of the 18th verse of Luke, it said that I beheld him, Satan, as lightning falling from heaven being kicked out. You know what he did? Not only was he kicked out, he had convinced a third of the angels to go with him. So if my math is correct, if you got 90 people in heaven, 30 of them left. Yes, sir. So he left 60 in heaven. Jesus. And he done took all of those demons right on down with Thank him because he was up there spreading a little stuff. <laughs> spreading a little untruth to the people that to the angels that was up there. So, but anyway, what we got going on, they rebelled. He rebelled against God, so God cast him out of heaven. And he took a third and came down and came down and got some power in this dark old world yes. that we live in. Walking two and four, seeking whom he may be devoured. He's busy, y'all. Amen. He's busy. Do not take it for granted. Amen. He is busy. He's trying every little sly, slick little thing that he could come up with to try to stop you from staying with God. Amen. He don't want yeah, you to believe on, a word man. that's going out. He don't want you to yeah. see none of that. He yeah. wants you to always stay confused, yeah. undecided, yeah. wavering, Jesus. tossed, yeah. to, yeah. for every wind. Every doctrine coming your way. I don't know where to go left. I don't want to go where right. But we are teaching today, Lord God, that Jesus is the answer. He's the answer. Don't ever let that slip from you. As long as you try to run for your life. Because don't do like me. Fall out of the bed. Stay in the bed. Stay in Jesus' home. Let him rock you. Let him hold you. Let him love you. Let him guide you. Even when it's going wrong, you sometimes you still got to stay with the Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We had a, 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 a setback or a blow the other day. We buried my wife's nephew 
which used to come over my house almost every day and come out there and just talk to me over and over, Uncle, I'm gonna do this, Uncle, I'm gonna do that. But we had his funeral yesterday. And it was a glad funeral, it was a happy funeral. That they, but it set somebody back in the group. Somebody got discouraged in the group. And you know how it is sometimes people say, Lord, why me? Why am I going through this? Why is this happening in my family? What is the problem? Give it to him. Give it to the Lord and let him take care of you. Don't let him turn you around. Do not let him turn. So we saw that Satan was so powerful, I thought he was, so what he tried to do, he tried to go and talk to Jesus. Oh, you know when he went up on the pedestal? Oh, when he told him to turn the, this rocks into bread, uh, bread and all. So he tried Jesus. And what did Jesus do? He rebuked him. He rebuked him. It is written, you can't tempt him. You don't need to be trying to tempt the Lord God. Don't you do it. Don't you go trying to make no deal with the Lord. Come on, Lord, if you do this, I do that. No. Don't, 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 don't try to compromise the Lord Jesus. Stay in the faith of Christ on your knees in your word, reading your word, asking God, now you guide me, you lead me, and do what I need, what needs to be done in my life. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. He's trying to stop us from entering in the kingdom of God. And he's working in darkness. He wants us to be fearful. And you know where fear calls? Come from? Ignorant. You, I mean, you get scared because you just don't know. <laughs> so ignorant just means I don't know. I don't understand. So that's where you get shaky at because you don't understand why, why I got a headache so bad. You don't understand that. Why is my head hurting? But don't get fearful. Because God is going to take care of you regardless of what you're going through. And he, and he don't want, also, he don't want you to know that Jesus is the answer to all our problems. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's a master now. Satan is a master. If you, if you style him as a snake. Let me tell you something about a good old snake. You can be walking in your backyard. And if he's stressed out. Laying there bathing in the sun. Mm -hmm. You can walk right by him. He won't even move. Right. And if you ain't looking closer, you ain't going to see him. Right. He's just that slick. <laughs> Stretched out right in your face. <laughs> laying still. And you walk right by him. And, don't even, and then all of a sudden you walk down there, turn around, come back. Ooh. <laughs> I didn't see him. He just that slick. Just that slick. He can hide himself. You can get in a conversation with someone, one of your friends, and you can be talking to him, and he'll be right in the middle of that conversation. He'll be slicking that little stuff right on by your head. He'll be trying to change your mind about what they are trying to get you to understand. He's just that slick. That's the way he works. I'm sorry. He is that just that person. So, but many of us, I'll say, my grandson was watching a movie. And he went in there to go to bed. I'm just I'm finna talk about that evil present. That's right. What comes from stuff. Right. And he went in there to go to bed. And about two o'clock in the morning, he came in there in the bedroom and he shook me. He said, Granddaddy, I can't take it. So what is it? He said, I watched a movie about evil and demons and everything. So I can't even sleep. Some people get fearful that way. And you know what he said to me? Can I get in the bed with you? <laughs> He's 13 years old. Oh, yeah. Let him get in there. Oh, yeah. He clammed right in the middle. Yeah, right. And went on right to sleep peacefully. What you said? That's how some people mind get when they get to watching all of this stuff about this corrupt demons and all. Don't fool with that stuff. Amen. Turn your TV off. Because it'll mess with your mind. Amen. It'll mess with your heart. It'll cause you to do things that you wouldn't normally do. Don't invite pain. 
Don't invite all of that gossip and all of that stuff that's going to turn you away from Christ. Stay away from it because you really, really need God. Amen. 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 But most people expect to see uh, Satan manifest itself in bold, outrageous ways. Yet, it's never been his style. He's slick. He's style. You see how he handled Eve? He, he just, he, he handled it real. He told her, he said, now, the woman said unto the servant, we may not eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but the fruit of the tree of God which is in the midst. But he said to her that you ain't going to die. <laughs> See how slick that was? I'm pretty sure she was just happy telling him that. And then they all of a sudden he throw that curve. You ain't going nowhere. God don't know what he's talking about. And later on in the story, it went on down and ended up taking it to her husband. And her husband did eat of it. He don't want us to be, he don't want us to do the thing that's right. He don't want us to draw into, uh, into a, he don't want us to draw into a fight. He just wants to take for granted that he's right so he can keep us from Christ. Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 11, chapter and the 3rd verse, he said, But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through, Eve through the subtlety, so your mind should be corrupt from the simplicity that is in Christ Jesus. We want to be cautious, very cautious about what we do in our life. Amen. We want to make sure we are making the right decision of what we are doing so we won't have to be given account for something that we said that we shouldn't have never said. If one come, did he went on to say that if someone come to preach another Jesus whom ye we have preached, you receive a different spirit which you have not received of any different gospel which have been accepted, he said, get away from it. Amen. Amen. Don't let nobody bring you nothing other than the gospel of Christ. Amen. Don't let them mix it up on you and make it up to you. Stay with Christ all the time. Believe Christ all the time. Because Satan altered the word of God. He altered it. He said, I feel not the man that this is a quote from a movie that I saw that Bruce Lee. I know everybody kind of familiar with him a long time ago. But he said, I feel not a man that has practiced 10,000 kicks once. I ain't afraid of him. But I feel a man who have practiced one kick 10,000 times. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. I feel not a man that practiced 10,000 kicks one time. But that dude that practiced 10,000 kicks. Yes, sir. Yes. That's, that's kind of scary, isn't it? You don't want to deal with that one. You don't want to mess with him. You don't want to mess with Satan either. Because he got some tricks up his sleeve you ain't even seen yet. You ain't seen him yet. Deception lead to misguiding judgment. Satan used half truth. Show Don't no. tell it. Half truth. Blur your vision. Mm -hmm. Prevent you a clear understanding. Blur your so vision. how you have you ever been given the half truth? Amen. Yeah. You didn't get it all. No. Somebody run to you and say, "Yeah, don't believe nothing El Cruther is say, cause El Cruther is uh, and leave it right there and go. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. They gave you the half truth, and then you done made a judgment on him. I you ain't gonna have nothing that. to do with him. You better say that. And then you spend the rest of your life trying to learn a person that somebody done gave you the half yeah. truth to, uh, and you that. found out that that person that gave you the half truth. Wasn't even telling the truth they said. That person ain't nowhere like that. Thank you, Lord. Because you done fed him to have truth. You don't want to do that. Amen. And also that verse teaches us that Satan got a mission. He got a method. And he got limitations. <coughs> okay? 
His aim and goal is what? Seeking you out and whom destroy. he may divide yes. and destroy. And destroy. Yes. That's his total mission. Because you know why? Because he is already gone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He already he already know he's going to hell. Yeah. So what he's doing now, he's trying to come to you to try to turn you around also. Amen. Thank you, and his method is beguiled. Trickery. Right? His method is slick. Not the truth. The half truth. That's his method. That's his goal. And that his goal is to stop you. The goal is to, for his mission to stop you from going to heaven. But his method is slicky. Sly. Trickery. Using all kind of cunning ways to change your mind about God. And that just ain't going to work. His limitation... He got a limit to where he can go. Because if you're in the arms of the Christ, he can't get you. But if you are entertained in all of his methods and all and all the things that's coming up on you, he's going to get you. His power is limit. If you stay with the Lord and stay in prayer, he'll take care of you. I don't care what he throw at you. Just understand, that's what he's coming to do. That's his mission. Yeah. To stop me. Yeah. That's his mission to try to keep me from going where I am going. But he can't get there now. Because what I did, I gave my life to Christ. And Christ is going to take care of me. God would not allow Satan to take over your life. But every escape, he got one for you. He got an escape for you. He got a way that you can get out of what is going on in him when you're tempted. When you're tempted, he's going to take care of you. There is no temptation taken to you but as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able to stand. But will the temptation also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it? That's 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, the 13th verse. Remember that whatever is going on in your life, however it's coming, God already got you an escape. He already know exactly what you're doing. It's common for us to be tempted. I mean, if you something going on in your life, you ain't the only one been through it. You're not the only one ever been lied on. You ain't not the only one somebody done stole from. It doesn't it happen to us. It happened to every one of us. All of us. And, and these temptations we'll face today and tomorrow and the next day. They dog at us all day long. Always something coming up in your face trying to change your mind about God. Regardless of what we do. And the most dangerous is, the temptation we face is the one that when we are weak. When we are weak. When we are weak, we are vulnerable. Vulnerable. That's any old gospel. And that's when we kind of get halfway off to where we're supposed to be with the Lord. I don't know whether the Lord saved me or not. Somebody comes to tell you, you can't be saved. And one, one big one that I, I hear a lot of people say, I, I, I just... I don't know. It just may be me. I don't understand why we say we all sinners. I don't, I don't get that one. Christ died that you may be saved. I, don't, I just don't get it to confuse me to let me know that I can't be saved. You can't live this life. You got to lie. That ain't true. You got to drink. That ain't true. Tell it, tell it. That's just not a true statement. Smoke. You ain't got to smoke. It's not true to somebody to tell you, you got to have something, to, you got to see and have something to pray for. That is not true. That's nothing but something slickery and sly that the devil want to put in your mind so you won't be trying to do right. I got the can't help it. <laughs> the devil made me do it. Oh, the devil made me. That, 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 that kind of mind is not in us. 
When you read your word and get spiritually in your word and you're seeking out your soul and your salvation, you put it off. You take it off lying. You take it off backbiting. You take it off all that stuff. When you're throwing it over in the garbage can. Now it's your choice if you want to pick it back up, put it again. You can do it. You can you can pick it right back up. You can get on your knees tonight and get on and say, Lord, Lord, forgive me for slapping my wife. And get back up the next morning out of the bed and turn around and bust upside the head again. It's your choice. You can do that. You can make that choice. But if you're really serious about living for God, really serious about living for God, then you're going to go to your word of God and you're going to seek out his righteousness and you're going to say, oh, Lord, what must I do? Guide me, direct me in the path of righteousness. Because you are going to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. But when you're walking through it, you got to know that you ain't got to fear no evil. The God is there. So don't let nobody slip nothing on you to tell you that you got the hell that can't help it. You can help it. You can do right. You can talk right. You can live right. And you can be an example for others. Because that's what the word teaches us that we can. Amen? Amen. Watch false doctrine. Evil doctrine carrying you from the truth. Don't be carried away from the truth. Hebrews 13 and 9 warn us and say, be not carried about with divers and strange doctrines. Because you're going to hear some strange ones out there. Oh, yeah, I done heard some. I mean, I, there's so much stuff out there going on now because the devil knows his time is getting ready to get out of here now. So he's working hard, fast and hard. And our life has turned into a microwave life. And everything we got to have now is quick. We got a cell phone that we can hit a button and then everything we want is on that phone. Walking around with computers in our pockets. That we can do anything we want to with that cell phone. We ain't got to go nowhere. No, we ain't got to leave the house to order no grocery. I ain't got to do nothing. All of it can be delivered at my house. Just a pop of a snap of a cell phone. That's just how busy this world. But don't get yourself caught up in that cell phone because that cell phone can make you lazy. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to go to church today, so I'm just going to watch it on the phone. You'll make yourself lazy and you land in the bed watching church. Having church, but at least you're listening. Let me do that. Amen. The truth that our Lord uh is with us. It said, do you learn? Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. And my God shall supply all, say all, all your, your riches, all according to his riches and glory in Jesus Christ. That's Philippians 9, 4 and 19. Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. That's the word. And we do know that for those who love God, all things work together for them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. That's Romans 8 and 9, 8 and 28. Amen. Amen. But don't be surprised. Remember, fighting temptation means trusting Promises of God prescription. You will know the truth and the truth shall set you free. You can't know that unless you read. Unless you study. Unless you come to Sunday school. Unless you do Bible classes. Because you got to learn that the Lord is going to set you free. Because what? I know the truth. Amen. Amen. But likewise, Ephesians 4 and 14 Admonish that we henceforth no more be children tossed to and forth, carried about by every wind, doctrine by the slate of men, and the cunning and crafting whereby they lie in wait to deceive. 
Did you get that one? To deceive. Don't, this is what that two and four are going to drive you to. This is sometimes, this happened to you when you jump from church to church. All right now. He's telling the truth over there, and I'm going to go over here and see what he kind of watered down for me a little bit. And you get tossed, and all of a sudden, you get confused. Amen. So you're just like a man sitting straddle of a fence, rocking back and forth. So now you're confused. The Bible says don't be like that. Don't be like that. You want to be like that tree that's planted by that rivers of water. You want to prosper. You want to grow. And you want to grow in the Lord. It ain't necessarily got to be money. But spiritually, you want to grow. Because what you want to do is get closer to Christ. You want to get to where you don't worry. That's what we were read today. Because worry will make you sick. And if you toss to and four, that can make you sick also. Amen. Be the same, come up on the same line. But we don't want Satan. We don't want him to take no advantage of you. In 2 Corinthians 11, 2 and 11, say, Lest Satan should get the advantage of you, for we are not ignorant of his device. We already say he's slick. He cunning. He sly. He do all that, so you don't want him to take advantage of you, because if you do, he gonna have you ignorant of his device. You don't even know he's going on in your life, so he's just gonna get messed up in Satan. And that's what he wants. It is not the power of Satan that defeat us, it's the wise. It ain't his power, it's the wise. It's the deliverance. It's the message that he bring you. The cunning that he sets you up with, and then he gets you. And like and you didn't even know he hit you yet. He's cunning and he's crafty. He's trickery and he's all of the above. And that's why we told, we are told, and Ephesians 11, 6 and 11, and it said that put on the whole armor of God. That you may be able to stand the wiles of the devil. Ephesians 6 and 11. And without the gift, this is the one we ought to pray all the time. Lord, give me the discerning of spirit. Yep. Help me to see Satan as Satan. Yes. Help me to understand that he's out to get me. Yes. And that's his main goal in life because he don't want me to make it with the Lord. So yes. this discerning of spirit is a great uh, spirit to have. I would love to be able to walk up to and, and be praying from somebody and then, then the Lord say, that name ain't ready. Uh, Don't even waste your time on it. <laughs> that would be a great discern to know. To know, here comes somebody finna lie to me right now. It would be nice that because you won't get your spirit all vexed messing with people that ain't ready for God. So today, let's trust that Jesus who is have every, who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin, that's Hebrew 4th chapter, the 15th verse, will provide an escape with the most persistent, that's Hebrew 13 and 5, for more power, 1 John 4 and 4 said, and for more satisfactory, that's what is our common man tempted are promising. So your promises are coming if you stay with the Lord. Don't let the temptation of life turn you around because Jesus is the bread of life. He's the light of the world. He's our good shepherd. He's the resurrection of life in truth. He is the true vine the king of kings. Let Jesus fix it. Don't let nobody turn you around. Don't let nobody turn you around. Don't let the Satan, don't let nobody, whomever it is, that they ain't got the truth in the gospel of Christ Jesus, turn them out of your mind. Because you are trying everything that you know to make it to heaven. And heaven is our goal. And we thank you. You are standing in the building. Yeah. Standing in the building. Yeah.
Now, Lord God, I thank you. I thank you right now for this opportunity to come before your saints today. I truly, truly ask that today, Lord God, that you bless each one of us. Bless our ears that we may hear what the word has said unto us. Bless it, Lord God, that I said one thing, Lord. Maybe two things, Lord, that somebody will learn and want to travel on in your word. Thank you for a saved life. Thank you for a sanctified life. Thank you for a glorified life. Thank you for the truth, Lord. Thank you for the understanding, Lord God, that you've given each one of us today. Now, guide and direct us in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. In Christ's holy name we pray. Thank God. Amen. 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 Am